tonight on Nate Newswatch. One organization is helping dogs and seniors across the city. You are, you know, our yearly checkups or twice yearly checkups right the way through the rest of the life of, of the dog. How a local brewery has done their part to help out junior hockey teams. And then from that, three teams immediately responded. Sherwood Park, Olds, and White Court all responded immediately with interest. And how athletic teams around the province are showing how they take care of their mental health. Look, it's, you know, helped people realize and maybe take a step back saying like, man, these are things that I love to do, but have I made time for them? Newswatch starts now. Good evening and welcome to this semester's first episode of Newswatch. This month marks the one-year anniversary of the first known COVID case found in Canada. And with new COVID developments and the provincial lockdowns remaining in effect, more questions are coming on when it will be safe to reopen. Our own Sarah Hunter joins us live from our news center with more on that story. Thanks guys. With over 100,000 vaccinations and the joint effort of many Albertans, we have seen a in active COVID cases to about just over 8,000 8, in Alberta. But with these decreases, we still see a large number of patients in our hospitals and ICUs, which means that restrictions are staying. But what do these restrictions mean for schools and local businesses? Staff and students at Emmy Lazert and J. Percy Page High School felt the effects personally as their number of COVID cases increased. With dozens of cases confirmed there last week, the two Edmonton Public High Schools have transitioned to online learning until February 8th. The decision was made last Sunday after the Edmonton Public School Division received provincial approval regarding the switch. The basis of the government of Alberta's re-entry plan and our own division re-entry strategy was that ability to pivot at any given moment. So we really developed our, our learning and teaching plans to support that transition. Schools are looked at case by case and are shifted online due to operational issues such as limited staffing and total number of cases. But what happens when you're a business that performs better? In person. Aradia Fitness in Edmonton is just one of the many businesses struggling to remain online. There's so much free content out there already created. And there's, you know, studios that have all of these incredible setups with all of these, you know, professional videographer setups. And so you're like competing against people who have had online platforms. While most of their regular staff and students await the day that they can safely reopen, some still remain committed to the sport. And like many other athletes, they are dealing with the limited equipment, space, and other issues that come with training from home. Dance is such a community-based event kind of thing. So like not having that platform to kind of share the space with other people, especially our dancers and our friends, is very mentally, mentally exhausting. Although restaurants, gyms, and other recreational facilities remain closed, there are a few luxuries that have reopened. Personal and wellness services, such as hair and nail salons, have received the green light. Their reopening was effective on January 18th, but with a few extra limitations. And some of those, and some of those limitations do include uh, booking in advance, as well as following any and all AHS protocols. So Sarah, is there any news on the new COVID variants and vaccines? So although the vaccines are still being determined by province to decide who will receive them in phase two, all the AHS is closely monitoring the COVID variants. And Sarah, what's the best way to avoid contracting these new COVID variants? Social distancing and wearing your mask is definitely still the number one way to help to help avoid contact contracting any form of COVID. Thanks, Sarah. That was Sarah Hunter reporting live from our news center tonight. You're watching Nate News Watch. ACAC athletes are helping create awareness for mental health as they do every year, but with a different online approach. Bell Let's Talk Day took place yesterday, and for the past week, ACAC athletes have been creating awareness and sharing how they help their mental health with the hashtag ACAC Share Your Care. The ACAC wanted to, to put forth an additional initiative uh, and, and named it ACAC Share Your Care. And I think, you know, by posting these on, you know, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, it's 
you know, help people realize and maybe take a step back saying like, man, these are things that I love to do, but have I made time for them? Athletes across Alberta are hoping they can help end the stigma around mental health and athletics by sharing the things that help keep them healthy using ACAC Share Your Care on social media. The Alberta Junior Hockey League is one of many organizations to feel the impact of the pandemic. One local brewery is doing what it can to support the Junior League in these trying times. Alley Cat Brewery has started selling AJHL beer in cans with the logos of three teams on them. One dollar from each six-pack goes back to the team. And co-owner Cameron French says things won't stop at just three. And the league helped put us in touch with all the teams. So we did put that out there for every team just to see if there was interest. Uh, and then from that, three teams immediately responded. Sherwood Park, Olds, and White Court all responded immediately with interest. Um, since then, we've had three additional teams reach out. The brewery has sold over 600 packs of the beer since its release last Friday. An Edmonton volunteer organization is helping seniors keep their pets happy and healthy this winter season. Elder Dog is a volunteer organization who helps senior citizens and people with mobility issues keep their dogs happy and healthy. The volunteers do tasks with the dogs that their owners are unable to accomplish on their own. We are mainly a support for seniors and senior dogs, so one or the other has to be a senior. Mm -hmm. So even if it's a younger person who has mobility issues, and we have a couple of those that, um, you know, they really have mobility issues and can't walk their dog, but their dog is a senior. We keep in contact with the dogs right the way through the rest of their lives. So when you adopt an elder dog, you're adopting the whole organization, if you will, because we do our, you know, our yearly checkups or twice yearly checkups right the way through the rest of the life of, of the dogs. Elder Dog also helps rehome dogs if the owner is unable to take care of them anymore. To volunteer or learn more about them, visit elderdog.ca. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to keep people at a distance, the City of Edmonton is looking into ways to make summer a little bit better. Horlack Park is quiet now, but Edmonton City Council is looking to make it busier come summertime. The city is looking at making designated drinking sites in select parks. John Zadek says it's been a long time coming. Well, this has been in the talks for, for several years. Um, we know that the summer of 2021 is likely going to have reduced restaurant capacity, limited and canceled summer festivals. So I think it's appropriate. Zadek also says that these sites will not be within the vicinity of a playground. Coming up after the break, we'll be taking a look at how the cold weather is impacting a lot of Edmontonians and how the Bissell Centre has been a keystone in helping out those in need. We could serve hundreds of people at a time. Austin DeLeon with Newswatch Entertainment here. I get a look at the new attraction at the Edmonton Ski Club that's been causing a buzz in the city. Also, we look into how a local theatre is making the show go on. All that and more on Nate Newswatch. Hi there. I don't know if you've been outside lately, but it's pretty darn cold. Is this weather going to be the same all weekend? Stick around after the break to find out. Zach, I can't tell you how cold I've been this week. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I got to the studio over an hour ago and I still can't feel my fingers. Hopefully weather person Gabe Munkasser can bring us some good news about the outdoors this weekend. Gabe? Well, Zach and Cass, it's been miserable out. I already hate going outside and this week has made it so much worse. I'm from Calgary and I kind of miss the nice weather. I miss nothing else about it, but the nice weather is, is greatly missed. And the high of minus two, the low of minus 12, I'm so jealous. Moving on to Jasper, it's gonna be Partly cloudy, so the sun's still going to be out, and there's not a high chance of precipitation, but you know, it's Jasper. Don't put your snow umbrella away. Keep it around. We've got a high of minus 3, a low of minus 12, so if you do winter sport, it is good time for winter sport. My grandmother lives in Fort McMurray. She, I call her Granny. Uh, when I was a kid, I called her Nanny because I couldn't say G. She's a peach. 
Anyway, she goes on walks and uh, she'll have some, some nice weather to do those walks because it's usually like minus 40, but this week it's gonna be a high of minus 12 and a low of minus 13. Moving on to the glorious city of Edmonton, of which I am currently standing in. We've got a mainly sunny high of minus 10 and a low of minus 19. Now our averages around this time of year, we've, we've got an average of, of minus four and a low of minus 13, but nobody cares about the averages. Let's talk about the records. And we're breaking records all the time. We got a high of 10 degrees, which is essentially the perfect temperature to start growing sunflowers. So fingers crossed, because I want my sunflowers. And the record for low is minus 49. That's almost minus 50. That's how the ice age started. What? Anyway, thank you so much. Back to you guys. Newswatch Weather, sponsored by NR92, the station for the students. The Bissell Center is finding ways to keep Edmonton's homeless population warm this winter season. COVID-19 has made the center staff work hard to find ways to keep the homeless safe and healthy. The Bissell Center houses many of Edmonton's homeless population, but due to COVID-19, they have to make sure they are following guidelines. Bissell Center has had to open more space during the day for their participants at the Edmonton Convention Center. Into the winter, the city, our organizations, there was this big need to like create and find a space where we could serve hundreds of people at a time without having to worry, with, with the ability to factor in things like physical distancing and and, and COVID-19. Due to the recent cold snap here in Edmonton, the center is also in need of winter clothing for its participants. Have you heard about the new ice wall, Zach? Yeah, I have actually, and our Austin DeLeon got a chance to see it up close and personal. Thanks guys. I'm taking entertainment to the Frosty Heights this week. That's coming up, but first, with many entertainment events taking the show online. The Grindstone Theatre in Edmonton has gone viral for its lampooning of Alberta's elected officials, most notably our Premier, Jason Kenney. Starting tonight, at midnight, all laws are abolished. The political satire sketches have gained over 100,000 views on their TikTok and YouTube accounts. The actor who plays Kenny, Donovan Workin, says he hopes that Jason has a strong opinion on his performance. As, a, as an artist, somebody who tries to create stuff that's interesting, the last thing you want is people to go, eh, it was okay. I want people to either love it or hate it. Thanks to the overwhelming amount of support and positive feedback, you can expect Donovan to be back as Kenny for a third installment of the sketch, this time regarding the Keystone XL pipeline. Because of the COVID-19 restrictions, another local theater is trying a new way to bring you that live action performance energy by streaming it online. I was the first Estelle girl. This January, the Northern Light Theater will be streaming the play, The Look, written by Alexa Wyatt. It follows the demise of a cosmetic beauty whose modeling days are over and she supports herself doing makeup tutorials for saleswomen. Creative director at the Northern Light Theatre, Trevor Schmidt, says that not all plays adapt so well to film. That's the, that's the premise of the whole show. So the idea of putting it on film was, was okay with me because I went, oh, it's just like, like, like you'd watch a training video at any job that you start at. To watch, tickets can be bought at their website, thenorthernlighttheatre.com, for $30. After the look, the theater will be streaming Something Unspoken, written by Tennessee Williams in April. A new attraction is the first of its kind in Edmonton, and it has Edmontonians trying their hand at a not-so-common sport. The Edmonton Ski Club and the Alpine Club of Canada teamed up to build the first ice climbing wall in Edmonton, and so far it has attracted a lot of attention in its few, first few weeks of opening. All of it good. Mm. Um, we're already booking into March, and it's uh, only January, so that uh, uh, shows that there's a real interest in the in market for this. Yeah. To book a climb, visit the EdmontonSkiClub.com to schedule. If you don't manage to book a climb this winter, don't stress too much. The Edmonton Ski Club intends on making the ice wall an annual event. 
You've probably heard of free community libraries in and around our city, but what about a free community sled shed? The Lenda Sled Shed is the first of its kind in Edmonton. Christy Edwardson is the one who came up with the idea and her father Keith is the one who built it. What started off as a project she could do with her dad, she slowly turned into a way of bringing their community together during these hard times. My intentions were just to do something with my dad initially, um, also give back to the community. Like I like doing, finding things to give back um, to the community uh, with. Christy and her father are in the works of building more sled sheds for the communities of Parkview and out in Grand Prairie, but eventually she hopes that more communities will show interest in the initiative. And that's entertainment this week on Newswatch. I'm definitely going to go try my luck at climbing the ice wall. What about you guys? Same here, but maybe when it warms up a bit. Yeah, me too. I also hope the Lendis sled shed makes it to my neighborhood. What a creative way to bring us together. Thank you for tuning in to our first show of this semester. We'll be back next week with another great show. Thanks for tuning in and have a good night.